every single season we have one episode where we do the world championships and european championships for 2023 today is that day we'll be starting off with the european championships itt this is a flat one in trento after that, a flat sprint European Championships in Alkmaar, the Tom Dumoulin Bergen World Championships ITT with the hill at the end, and finally the Sagan Richmond World Championships as the road race. As always, we'll be doing so with the Italian team. Firstly, the European Championships ITT with Ghana and Cataneo. I could have chosen Sobrero as well, but I decided to be a bit biased and take Cataneo instead. The favorite is our Filippo Ganna, but in all honesty, last year in the World Championships he was favored as well, and I still lost to Wout van Aert, so let's hope he win this one. Wout van Aert is on the road, and so is our legendary T-tier, Filippo Ganna. Let's see if we can do what we came to do, win the European Championships. Van Aert is closing in towards the first intermediate, does he take the first time away from Kung? Nope, five seconds down. Ganna, we've got a bit too much yellow, so I don't know what to do about that. Let's go towards like 86 for a bit and then reduce it to 85 again so we can regenerate that in the last two kilometers. Six seconds ahead of Stefan Kung. That is great. Last kilometer for Wout. Kung is in the lead as well at this finish line. Let's take a look if Wout van Aert can take that over. And he does not. Nine seconds. Filippo Ganna looking like he's going to put up... A really strong time trial here. Let's lower it towards 85 again. There we go. And the finish is 17 seconds. He does it. Yes, indeed. Second year in a row. Filippo Ganna as European ITT champion. If we're being honest, it would be more of a surprise if we actually lose this kind of race with Ganna. Next up, the road race. 173 kilometers. Very flat. Some small cobble sections, but those on paper should not matter too much. The run-in for the sprint will be very important on this parkour because if we take a look at the map right here, we see that the finish line resides after going over the following cobble section. Right now, we'll see that we go into it. This is the cobble section that happens. And then after that, the break is already seen going into two corners straight for the finish line. So we might have to sprint the second that we leave that cobble section. And as a consequence, my positioning on the cobble section will be very vital. Five and a half kilometers to go. I'll go 99 on Ghana in the hopes that I can get to the front ASAP with everybody. I'll use Viviani as lead out for Bonifazio. Let's see if that's a good idea or not. I haven't figured it out yet, but I guess we're about to find out. Let's see if I can start sprinting with Aldani yet on the gobbles. That's a terrible idea. That's a terrible idea. That's a terrible idea. I think I lost it because of this. I think I lost it because of that. There's no way in hell that I will win. Hold it. Really? Oh, there he goes, Sagan. Fanar takes it. I shouldn't have sprinted on the cobbles. Mistakes were made. The 1 2 for Alperson Phoenix, because Wout Fanar and Sagan are both riding at that team at the moment. Italy with 7, 8, and 9. That's just not good, is it? We have some good news for the upcoming World Championships road race, though, because Colby has entered his fitness peak. That is brilliant. Fun story PCM's so good at rider planning that Primoz Roglic has not ridden a single Grand Tour in 2023. And I don't know why. Instead, he spent May during the Giro riding the Grand Prix du Morbihan. After that, during the Tour de France, he went to the likes of the Cycling Tour of Biho. And after that, during the uh, Felta, he went to Tour Romania. So I'm guessing he just really likes Romania. On to the rainbow races then. UCI World Championships ITT in Bergen. We've got Filippo Ganna, Fini, Cataneo and Sobrero. I am not surprised though that we are not favored with Ganna. We've got Evenepoel being favored. We're actually still second favored, shared with Wout van Aert as well. Let's give it a try. Filippo Ganna is off. Let's take a look what top Ganna can do on this parkour. When it comes to the first time check, we have our three Italians at the front. So it didn't really work out our strategy so far, but perhaps on Ganna it will with a 86 time trial stat on the day. We've got 75 mountains, 76 hills, so that should help with the final hill as well. When it comes to the first time check, we're actually almost passing Tom Dumoulin right here, so we'll probably do a decent time. 26 seconds ahead of everybody here. Let's hope our somewhat positive split strategy will work out well for Ghana. Final climb is about to start. I will gradually up it towards 85 right now on the climb itself. Last 200 meters right now. Let's up it to 99. Come on, Ganna. Come on, Ganna. Yes, by a minute. World champion, Filippo Ganna. It's a thing. Last year, we failed. This time around, we did it. Honestly, I think the AI riders miscalculated this time trial and went for too much of a negative split because I tried to balance it a bit more 
And because of that, an easy victory of like a minute by Ghana. And finally, we also do the Road Race World Championships. 260 kilometers, Richmond, USA, the one where Peter Sagan ended up riding away on the final cobble hill and was never seen again. Kovi, can we figure out a way to get him into that rainbow jersey for the second year in a row? That would be amazing, but we are far from the favorite. Wout van Aert, Kasper Asgren, we've got Seneschal, Steven, etc. So... Let's see if we can beat them. It is noticeable that these are very peaky climbs, which means that the peloton is destined to split up quite a few times this race. We have to do the Richmond climbs four more times before we head to the finish line. I'm going to try and spend Trenton on this round. We will use Betiol on the next circuit and so forth towards the line to actually put some pressure because I do believe we can do something on a parkour like this by splitting up the group even more before the last circuit even starts because right now we will go downhill and then directly uphill so I will 99 onto this next hill and that should split up the group relatively easily actually there we go as you can see the entire train of Italy is trying to ride away right here the bond is not following and we are gone with the team that's how broken these hills are on the Richmond parkour and I will definitely use that to my advantage the rest has come back going into the next cobble section, but that's not too big of a deal. I'm not going to do this every single circuit. I'll do it the next one, though, because then we might be able to keep that team time trial up till the line. We are unironically gone again, and I didn't do anything. I never paced more than 85 on that hill. And we are gone with 10 people, including 3 riders from the original breakaway. So, 7 riders of Italy doing a team time trial once again. Here we go, we've got moves and people are coming back one by one. The likes of Mbala Pitcock have chosen to bridge over onto the smallest of these hills. Garcia Cortina, nope, it's Serrano going ham on this cobble section. A rider from the original break, still competing for the World Championships. As long as he doesn't block me in my next attempt here to dive downhill with my team, then I will be fine. Kovi needs to find a way to get to the wheel though, because right now he is being dropped, which is... Not that ideal either. Oh, come on, Kovi. Spend your energy and get back to the wheel. Bet you drop the gap. I don't need you to chase anyone down right here. There we go. We are gone with our team once again. Let's do 85 because Kovi is not in the wheel. 10k to go. And in all honesty, we are looking really, really good. We've got three competitors left. from Bala, Asgren and Pitcock. And the rest is on two minutes plus. Here we go. We are moving on to the cobble section. Let's go 99 with... Moscon right here and get our teammates to the front because right now we have to really hammer it for the last four kilometers let's see how much pressure we can put on the likes of an Asgren who will try and go all out on this section Albanese needs to try and follow Kovi as well come on three kilometers I will start my sprint with Moscon right now on this uphill section Oldani in the wheel everybody can start sprinting very very soon because it's Downhill and uphill already in a second. Let's go right now. Yes, I will. There we go. Asgren versus Oldani versus Albanese. Albanese, come on, man. Oldani. Asgren can't win. No, no. Come on, come on, come on, Oldani. Oldani, yes, yes, yes. Oldani. Ah, oh, it's not even Kovi. Ah, oh, this is close, but Oldani has it. Yes. World champion for Ayola once again. A different rider, though. Not Kovi this time around, it's Stefano Bloody Oldani after being injured for half a year. Let's be real, one of the most broken parkours in Pro Cycling Manager, hands down, because this was way too easy. We basically spent half this race doing team time trials after dropping everybody on the hills. The likes of Avanard being on three minutes on this parkour is just not very realistic. But hey, I won't complain with Oldani and a rainbow jersey. There we go. Our national team duties for the year have been done. We have a world champion in our midst, Stefano Bloody Oldani. And that means we've got one more episode to go in the season. The likes of Italian classics, transfer overview for the team and other teams, and also taking a look what happened in the world around us. Thanks for watching this one. See you soon. Goodbye.